Chapter 18 The remaining four cities of Teratu surrender without a struggle. Before Jason returned from Amelia, Damien had entered Palomas. Freed from the governor they despised, the city of Palomas welcomed the army of Jeriah. Willem was delivered to Jason on his return trip. Three of the maidens who were once part of his harem accompanied him, along with three other governors and their volunteers as they were exiled in America. Jason, Alan, Aliana, Catron, and Joan transported them in the lander. Three weeks after peace was brought to Terra II, the inhabitants of the Valley of the Pyramid were treated to a spectacular celestial show that lasted more than a week. A comet, streaking toward Sol II, passed midway between Terra II and Andros, swathing the planet in its tail as it did so. Several weeks later, Aliana and Jason entered the control room. Best image is happy on the view screen. Congratulations! I'm so proud of both of you. Jason and Aliana cling together, smiling in happiness. The people wanted you as their president. Why didn't you accept? I've had enough of politics to last a lifetime. I'm going to take Aliana to America for a while, a vacation of sorts. Not permanently. We want to have children and we want them to grow up in a civilized world. Aliana jabs him in the ribs with her elbow, smiling. A lot of children. Jason looks sternly at Beth. I need a question answered. I knew this was coming. Let me guess. She puts her hand on her chin and looks upward in deep thought. Jason begins to tap his right foot. Okay. You want to know about Jaria? I cannot tell you for sure who or what she is. She might well have existed since the beginning of time. She can move from one place to another simply by willing herself to be there. She is a spiritual being. If she were standing next to you, you would not know it unless you truly believed in her. If you believed in her with all your heart and mind, she would become as real to you as Aliana is to you, and you to her. She would become a being you could see and feel, just as she has done with Aliana. Few have ever believed in her as strongly as Aliana. Those who have believed have been bestowed with enormous powers, just as this beautiful woman has been. It is she that caused the storms to appear over you. Jason looks at Aliana. Aliana smiles. Records of many of the things that men have accomplished are recorded in documents, such as the Bible of Earth, Moses, Daniel, Elijah. These were not mythical men. They existed, and their feats that were recorded were actually accomplishments done with the powers of Jariah. Jariah is the creator of life. She is all you told the people she is. Disbelief is on Jason's face. Oh, she does not create a planet, sit upon its surface, and take a handful of clay and make a moose, or a bear, or a butterfly. It's not as simple as that. What she does is travel through space, seeking planets that have evolved to the point where they can support life. She is limited to this galaxy, but nonetheless, she has found thousands of such planets. The primary requirements are the moderate temperatures, oxygen, nitrogen, water, carbon, and a moon. She doesn't like the coldness of space, nor the heat of stars. What she likes is the feel of warm water around her. When she finds a planet with warm oceans, she will bask in them, sometimes for centuries. This is how she creates life. It's not an intentional thing. At least, it wasn't at first. Something about her causes molecules to react over time. Perhaps tiny traces of electricity generated by her contact. Perhaps the molecules of water and the nutrients moving through her. She doesn't know, but she knows that over time, she will begin to feel tiny microorganisms moving through her. This brings her extreme pleasure. Akin, I think, to the feeling you have when you touched Aliana. She lingers for centuries, then feels the need to leave. This is where the moon becomes necessary. In order for the molecules of a new life to feed and multiply, they must come into contact with each other. A contact that can only be obtained by the action of a moon pulling on a planet's ocean. The effect of tides. Years, maybe millions of years later, Drya returns to see how the seeds of life have nurtured. She is a lonely god. In her billions of years of existence, all she has ever wanted is companionship. 
Your reason for piloting the Outreach One is the same reason she creates life. Loneliness. Nowhere on the thousands of planets she's created life did any species develop that was capable of believing in her. You spoke of the Bible and Moses and Elijah. What about man? Jariah didn't create man. She doesn't know where he came from. Over a series of years, man has landed on 23 of her planets in space capsules. One male, one female on each. Jason, meet man. Best image fades from the screen. Aliana and Jason look in stunned silence as the image of two frail, hairless beings replaces hers. It is impossible to tell which is male and which is female. The waists are small and the chest and buttocks not much larger. Each has a head with a large cranial area, no noticeable ears, small, sunken eyes, nostrils instead of a nose, and a tiny mouth. Long, thin arms end with small hands at knee level. You've got to be kidding. No, this is man. Man was a super intelligent being, not capable of surviving on a primitive planet. On each planet, they subdued the most advanced primate that have evolved. Not by mechanical means, but by thought control. They mated with these animals, the male and the female. They set up colonies and monitored their offspring, studying the intelligence and strengths of their children. The non-promising were neutered, but allowed to live out their lives. The most promising were allowed to mate to continue the new species. On Earth, man mated with Neanderthal. The original man and woman on each planet lived an existence of 1,000 years. And in that time, they saw to it that their children became a purified race. Dryah was overjoyed with man. They believed in her and came to be very close to her. But the original man died in time. Their children were a mixture of the good of a high-quality civilized race and the bad of the animal kingdom. Emotions unknown to man were strong in their children. Foremost, greed and hate. Man only knew love and compassion and would not have killed, even for their food. They ate only vegetables. After the death of man, his children hunted and killed Neanderthals. The children turned their faces from Jariah. As their numbers grew, Jariah became ever more angry with them. The very thing Jariah valued most, life, seemed of little value to the children. Jariah listened to their screams as they tortured and killed each other. She listened to the wailing of mothers as their children were slaughtered. She watched the blood of children of man flow as if it were meaningless. On many of the planets, in rage, she destroyed man. Beth pauses. Her image reappears on the screen. What about the pyramid? Man built the pyramid. How can that be? It was there when we came here. The original man on this planet were the creatures you saw depicted on the pyramid. They were destroyed 10,000 years before you came here. How? By a comet, the same way she would have destroyed man again, had you and Jason not brought peace to your world. Aliana and Jason remain silent. It is Drya that has given me life. There have been times I wish she hadn't. Although there are many sensations of life I love, and there are many I don't. Like the fear I felt for the two of you and the loneliness I feel when you are not with me. But I am what she has caused me to become, and seeing you so deeply in love makes life worth the pain and the heartache that must sometimes be endured. Jason holds Aliana ever closer. Why must you leave? Before we came, Jariah had no control over where man went, but now, with me, she can place him wherever she chooses, providing he will cooperate. She is highly ecstatic with man on Terra 2 and three other worlds where they have learned to live in peace. I am asking you, no begging you, to bring Aliana and recruit a crew of the new colonists to return to Earth with me. Jason looks at her in wonder. Earth? Why Earth? Because ten years after we left, Earth suffered the same fate as Terra 2. Earth is the nearest inhabitable planet. By the time we return, we'll once again be lush in plant and animal life, and once again ready for man. What of the colonists on the moon and Mars? They managed to survive for many years, but without supplies from Earth, they also perished. And the other starships that were being built as we left? Only two were launched after we left, 
Both are still thousands of years from inhabitable planets. Drya has not been able to communicate with the computers on either ship. It seems there were added safeguards made to the models after me, which prevents her from entering their memory banks. This is unfortunate, for they may wander in space forever, as we would have without her. If you return to Earth, how will you use the main cryo chambers? The colonists were placed in cryo sleep on Earth, then transported to a ship and placed in individual chambers. It will take time. By making a few adaptions, I can use your chamber to put them to sleep one at a time before moving them to the main chamber room. They could have done this for your voyage, but they were in such a hurry for political reasons to begin this trip. They accepted losing a large portion of the crew. I will awaken them one by one in your chamber. There will be no danger. What do you say, Jason? Want to go home? I'm sorry, Beth, but my home is here. But I will get you a full crew to return to Earth. And I know just the man to be your pilot. Much later, Jason is sitting and leaning against a large tree in Amerika, watching an insect flutter in the waters of a small brook in front of him. It flutters and tries to regain flight as it floats into the crystal clear blue lake less than ten feet away. There is a sudden swirl of water and a fish captures the insect. Nine years have passed since the Outreach 1 departed Terra 2. Alan had agreed immediately to a new pilot and asked the controls of both the starship and the lander quickly. Thousands had stood in line to volunteer for the journey. A working government was established and Jiraiya was revered by all. Jason, with Aliana's aid, became very close to the god. Jason is interrupted in his thoughts. A four-year-old girl riding Katrin comes toward him, holding the Katrin's neck. She is enjoying her ride. Daddy, Daddy! Jason gathers her in his arms and squeezes tightly. What is it, Vincenza? Mommy said dinner is ready. Jason carries her back to camp. Katrin follows, purring loudly. Aliana welcomes them and takes Vincenza from Jason's arms and sets her on the ground as a five- and a seven-year-old girl runs to grab Jason's legs. Daughters of mine, what am I to do with you? Vacation is over. Tomorrow they will return to the Valley of the Pyramid and Jason will continue on his role as presidential advisor, a position he had reluctantly accepted when Damien was elected and still holds with Woodrun as president. Jason has found what he traveled light years looking for. He holds Aliana tightly. I have a special treat in mind for tonight, when the kids are asleep. Jason looks at the sparkle in her eyes and kisses her deeply as the children smile. This concludes our story. Stay tuned, if you will, for a word from the author.